So it's November 14th, a Pentagon partner, Emily Oberman, has just revealed a new identity system for Warner Brothers Entertainment. A bold slender emblem replaces the fat, heavy, multi-layered mess they had for years. Paired with a fun, cartoonish typeface, the new identity is just on point. But nothing can be perfect. Showing off the new dynamic logo, as it's often done, they include a technical breakdown of its formal qualities, as if people would actually appreciate. And in doing so, they further one of the biggest lies in the history of design the golden ratio. Blessed with innate, divine-like beauty, these perfect shapes, or more accurately, their proportions, are said to be the secret behind Leonardo da Vinci's most iconic masterpieces, the Greek pantheon, and interestingly enough, Apple's new logo. But how can a strict system of proportions be the underlying reason why such a diverse set of works looks aesthetically pleasing? The answer is deceptively simple. It's not. Technically speaking, two quantities are in a golden ratio if their ratio is equal to the ratio of their sum to the larger of the two quantities. As this makes sense to virtually no one, there's an easier way to say it. Two shapes are in a golden ratio if one divided by the other equals roughly 1.618. Mathematically, this ratio seems like a pretty cool concept who kept many thinkers busy for a long time. But ever since it creeped its way back into art and design, people started making wild claims about its efficacy. There's a lot of tutorials out there that help you build the shapes needed to design in the golden ratio. Here's a popular way to do it. We take a square and duplicate it. We do it again, only this time we make the new square as tall as the two initial squares stacked on top of each other. We take the whole composition and repeat the process. Here, these two squares are now in the golden ratio. Except they're not. In fact, this way of building the palette for your golden shapes is off by quite a lot. We can check by taking the big square and dividing its proportions by 1.618. If the palette had been built correctly, the new square would be the same size as the smaller one, but there's an evident gap between the two. This is because what we've built here is actually a visual representation of Fibonacci's sequence, which tends towards the golden ratio, but it's not actually the same, especially with smaller numbers. Here's an actual golden ratio palette. If we take the bigger square and divide its proportions by 1.618, we can see the two squares do overlap. I guess the main takeaway here is, if you really want to use the golden ratio in your designs, at least make sure you're doing it correctly. Now that we've established that most people using the golden ratio are probably off by a substantial margin, let's get to the main point. The golden ratio is bullshit. There's nothing special about this rectangle that would make any design structured around it more aesthetically pleasing, regardless of their context and overall quality. Here's a set of four rectangles. If asked to pick a favorite, which one would you choose? Do you even have a favorite? Or aren't they just rectangles? What makes this one so divine? Even if the golden ratio were to be somehow more palatable, wouldn't its efficacy rely on a few rules? Or are we saying we can just arrange any of its shapes however we want, and the result will be guaranteed? To illustrate my point, let's look at this popular wireframe for the Apple logo. Here we see the icon broken down to a set of golden circles that overlap to shape the curves of the design. Disregarding the many imprecisions dotted throughout the whole wireframe, the salient question is, is there a specific reason why we would have to pick these specific circles and build the logo this way instead of this way? Or are we to say we can just mix and match without any rules at all? Who would ever build an organic, refined shape from the inside out by packing smaller geometries next to each other, seemingly at random? Here's the same logo built with a range of different proportions. Could you tell which one was designed with the golden shapes? The simple fact that I could arrange the golden shapes however I pleased while making this logo should make the task impossible. This gets to the paradox behind the golden ratio. As long as we play with scale, literally any shape could be built using geometries with golden proportions. As it turns out, the iteration following the 1.618 rule is actually the worst. The main question now becomes, how could it be possible that the myth still lives on, centuries after its conception, in one of the biggest design firms in the world? I tend to think it's mostly marketing, at least in the upper echelons. A big budget client will literally drool over your design when you take the time to explain why it belongs to the same category of refined masterpieces as the Mona Lisa. Back in the real world, the design team probably did their own thing and then reverse engineered the golden ratio into the shape. It's a cool story, it's ancient, and somewhat arcane, and so it sells. As for everyone else, beauty can be streamlined into a rule. It can depend on a set ratio, and it won't be boxed in by charts and wireframes. 
balanced composition are as pleasing as their wild, loose counterparts. Graphic design is filled with examples of situations where strict geometry yields a worse result than just eyeballing it. Typefaces are built with optical corrections to make them feel balanced. Centered type and shapes are often offset because the way we perceive things is actually not that mathematically accurate. As long as you know your craft, no chart will ever guarantee a better result across the board. Good taste is what should guide an informed design process, not a loosely applied mathematical principle. Let's all get together and finally put this myth to rest. Thank you.